song Love Me Do to be their first single, releasing it on October 5th, 1962. McCartney had actually originally written that song when he was 16, so yeah, the Beatles' first single was written before the Beatles even existed. Love Me Do was a success, peaking at number 17 on their record retailer chart. The band made their first television appearance on their regional news show People and Places. By the end of 1962, Epstein had convinced the band to stop swearing and smoking on stage. Oh, and to dress more professionally on stage. The band had also convinced each other that they'd be better if everyone helped out with not only the singing, but also the songwriting. Although it'd mostly just be Lennon and McCartney doing most of the songwriting over the years. Parlophone released their second single, Please Please Me, on January 11th, 1963. This one was a bigger hit, reaching number one on both the New Musical Express and Melody Maker charts. On February 11th, the Beatles recorded 10 songs in one day for their debut LP, also called Please Please Me because it featured the hit single. Wait, did he say 10 songs in one day? Yes, I said 10 songs in one day. They recorded them live and knew the songs well. George Martin was still in shock, saying, quote, I don't know how they do it. We've been recording all day, but the longer we go on, the better they get. Parlophone released the album on March 22nd, 1963. By May, Please Please Me had hit the top of the United Kingdom album charts and stayed there for 30 weeks before being replaced by their next album. Yep, this is when Beatlemania began. Beatlemania describes the insane popularity the Beatles experienced over the next few years, typically symbolized by screaming teenage girls chasing them around. The bigger they got, the crazier the hysteria and high-pitched screaming by their mostly young fans. Please Please Me had two more huge huge hits, From Me To You and She Loves You. Beatlemania went next level with their second album, With The Beatles, which Parlophone released on November 22nd, 1963. It eventually became just the second album in the United Kingdom to sell a million copies and stayed at the top of the album charts for 21 weeks. Though the album had no singles, it was even more critically acclaimed than their debut album and also featured Harrison's first recorded solo composition. Oh yeah, and this was the album that described them as the quote fabulous foursome in the liner notes and thus the Fab Four nickname was born. While the Beatles were huge in Europe, that success didn't quite translate to the United States. But that changed with their single I Want to Hold Your Hand, which Capitol Records released in the United States the day after Christmas of 1963. The song was the band's first American number one hit. In January, VJ released Introducing the Beatles, and Capitol released both Meet the Beatles and Twist and Shout in North America. These three albums had stuff from the Beatles' first two albums, but also some other gems, and then on February 9th, 